Going to Lagos in Portugal from the UK should have been an easy trip, but with the drugs bust on the plane, two full searches of cabin baggage, and two passengers almost coming to blows, we were glad to get off the plane. Arriving at the train station in Faro by bus, the station seemed missing two vital features. Boards that told you when trains would appear and leave and from what platform, then the trains themselves had no indication on them where they were going. But after quite a wait, a train did appear that said Lagos on the front and we hopefully boarded. We had arrived in a severe coastal event, according to my weather app, and a rainbow of the train suggested the weather had not been good before we got there. But the weather held out while the train trundled slowly towards Lagos. We passed the resorts of Albufuera and Portimao, with the train going through the fields of trees laden with oranges, storks nesting high on chimneys, and over long estuary bridges. As the train approached the Lagos cliffs, we saw the beach restaurant alongside the Bay of Lagos, with the sandy beaches beyond, and caught our first glimpse of the Atlantic Ocean. Crossing the footbridge over the Ben Suffering River, we walked up the esplanade into the town. The market stalls were empty, and strong winds were blowing the palms alongside the path. The storm was not over, we were right in the midst of it. I had been to Lagos before, but that was a long time ago, and I wasn't sure what I would remember. Walking through the town, I recognised some of the buildings, or did I just remember photographs? I dodged through a tall party blocking the street, but there weren't too many of them, and Lagos at this time of year didn't suffer from over-tourism. The back streets up the hills were quiet, and many of them had street art. Lagos had many beautiful old buildings in the old town, castle walls to come across, and some of the murals were really cool. Hidden away in one of the buildings was the fish market with today's fresh catch and there was a number of town squares including the one in front of the old church Igreja de Santa Maria de Lagos a good place for a rest stop and a drink at a cafe and watch life go by Inside, the church wasn't super ornate, but quite stylish in a Catholic theme. A German motorhome blocked the narrow streets of the town centre, and the locals were quite incensed, trying to guide it to somewhere more suitable. I made my way to my accommodation, and for now the rain held off, just the occasional drizzle. Arriving at my lodgings, after a few phone calls, I managed to get in, and the apartment was very comfortable. On the rooftop, there was a terrace with 360-degree, fantastic views of the town, including across to the beaches along the bay. The theme of the trip was to have some good meals in the town's restaurants, umbrellas over the tables keeping the rain off, though sometimes I was beaten inside by the power of the downpour. There were lulls in the rain, and in these I was able to get out and explore the town. Right next to where I was staying was the small Fort da Ponta, de Bandera, and to the right of this the beautiful yellow sand beaches started. Only five minutes walk from my apartment, there was a series of beaches connected together by tunnels through the cliffs. After the cold of the British winter, I was very happy to be there, even if there were clouds rolling overhead. They weren't unbroken and the sun came out some of the time to warm us. At this time of year, the Atlantic is too cold for swimming, except for maybe cold water swimming enthusiasts, and the only people I saw in the water were surfers in wetsuits across the other side of the bay. The beaches were pristine, with no garbage in the water or along the shore and the water looked very clean. If it had been warmer, people would surely have been swimming. The cliffs are the start of the Ponta da Piedad, the Point of Mercy or Piety Point, and they are one of the best features of the Algarve. There are sea pillars, rock arches and hidden caves, chiselled out by the winter storms. The cliffs are made of a golden yellow limestone up to 20 metres high, and have been there for millions of years. There are many boat tours around the headland in the warmer months, 
or if you like you can rent a canoe to paddle around. I didn't see boat tours going out in early March, so maybe they only run when it's warmer. This would be a highlight of visiting Lagos I'm sure. One of my lasting memories of visiting Lagos before had been walking along the cliff top paths. I waited for another gap in the storm, then headed across to the path starting near the Lagos fire station. The track led to the Prior do Pinau, and you could see right across the town to the beaches on the other side, and also down to the beaches at the foot of the cliffs. New since the last time were a series of boardwalks, built to try and reverse coastal erosion from the many people walking the cliff paths. They seemed a good idea, but not quite so much fun as the old tracks. I walked across to the Praia Dona Ana, one of the Algarve's most beautiful beaches, and gazed across at the headland beyond. You can walk much further, but I had a knee injury, and this was all I could do at the time. If you have mobility problems, the boardwalks have many steps on them down to the beaches, and also just walking along the top of the cliff there are a fair number of steps. The beaches to the northeast of the town will probably be easier as they don't have cliffs. Hanging on your every word And any time you talk The rope is burning And maybe I'm just brave when I'm asleep I tell you how you kill me in my dreams On my final day I decided to go to the beaches on the other side of the river to the northeast of Lagos. I got an Uber around the bay to reduce the walking, getting it to drop me off at the train station. The beaches aren't far from there. You enter down more boardwalks to protect the dunes and there are ramps down onto the beaches if you have difficulty walking. You could probably take a wheelchair down there. It's an amazing beach and stretches off for miles towards Portimao. There are beach huts along it and a number of beach bars where you can get something to eat. I got some meatballs with mashed potato at Linda Beach Bar and it was very good. When the sun came out it was warm enough for t-shirts though a number of the patrons sat there in their outdoor gear. It's fantastic for a beach walk and you can watch the surfers from the surf school honing their skills. To the left of the beginners there were some more experienced surfers who were catching a few waves but the waves were probably more suitable for learners being only about three foot high. At the time Nazar was experiencing 35 foot waves from the storm further north in Portugal but the Algarve was sheltered from these bigger swells as it faces south. A good place to learn to surf. Days like these are why you get on a plane from the UK and put yourself through the discomfort of travelling for half a day or more to see the blue ocean and light twinkling off the breaking waves. It felt like the storm had passed and we were only left with the wind, though with the sun beating down gently it wasn't a problem. I walked back through some old ruins by the beach, took some photos, then walked past the port and the train station. In the evening I caught a movie at Lagos's beautiful old 50s cinema, then prepared to return home. The next day I got up at 7am to catch the only train back that would make my flight, seeing the dawn over the harbour and walking across the bridge for the last time. Then back onto the train for the two hour journey back to Faro. I see my pretty face in his old eyes I 
Listen to our blood run side by side. A quick look round Farrow Town Centre at the port, the boats and over the tracks to the lagoon. I miss the old town, that will have to wait for another day. Farrow's attractions are not as obvious as Lagos's, but I think it has hidden depths. Then back to the airport for an easier return flight. A trip that could have been a bit sweet with memories, but turned out okay. So where next? Mm -hmm.